Hey everybody, um, in this lesson we're going to be talking about factoring quadratic expressions in two variables. So we've already talked about factoring quadratic expressions. Um, hopefully you've seen that in the last video. But this one we're going to be incorporating what happens when they actually give you two variables when you, and you want to graph a quadratic expression. And remember quadratic uh, is another way of saying a trinomial squared. Um, it's a polynomial with three terms in which the highest power of the trinomial is a 2. To factor a quadratic expression, the trinomial squared, um, which is also referred to as quadratics, you need to write the expression as a product of two binomials. So you've done all this before. Um, just a little quick recap. Quadratic expression in standard form. This is a standard form for a quadratic expression. So it looks like this. It's f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. The only uh, thing you need to know is that every single um, coefficient has a letter, right? So the value. In this case, a is the number in front of the x squared, b is the number in front of the x, and then c is the last number. So we've, we've known this from the last uh, lesson. If you have not seen the last lesson on factoring quadratic expressions, you should actually watch that before you watch this lesson because you're going to be a little bit lost. So what you should know by now is the following. So if they give you something like this, if they want you to um, factor the following expression, meaning find the un unmultiply it, right? So factor means to undo the multiplication. So find out which product of two binomials will give you this original expression. So from the last couple of lessons, you should have known that you draw a big X first, you figure out, okay, out of this expression, what's A, what's B, and what's C? You should know that A is equal to the number nine, B is equal to the number 15, which is in front of the X. And then C is the number without the variable, which is in this case, positive four. From this, um, you should know that A times C goes on top and then B goes on the bottom. So in this, in this example, uh, when we multiply A times C, we get nine times four, which is 36. And when we multiply, or sorry, when we just leave B by itself and drop it down, we get the bottom of the big X is equal to 15. So that's where we start from. Um, and then we got to figure out what is the combination of numbers that multiply to the top number and add to the bottom number. So while I write this down, you should probably think about that. So what two numbers multiply to that number, but add to that number? If you said 12 and 3, you are 100% correct. So 12 times 3 would give you 36, but 12 plus 3 would actually add up to 15. So um, then, what the last lesson showed is that you can write down the factors as 9x or ax and ax again, whatever that first term is, um, right here. And then the answer to the, to the x, the, those two numbers that give you the correct combination would be following those, those two terms. Um, so, and then after that, you got to figure out, okay, is there anything that I can divide uh, both terms by in each of the parentheses? In this case, the answer is yes. I can divide both of these, the 9 and the 12, by the number 3. So I can divide both of these by 3. In this case, the same exact thing. I can divide them both by 3. So this will give me the final answer as 9 divided by 3 is 3. So I'm going to put 3x. 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. So I'm going to put positive 4. 9 divided by 3 again is 3. And then 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. So my factored out um, expression in terms of two binomials multiplied together is this. Uh, if I multiply this out with the box, I should get the original problem. So if you always want to check your work, if you want to check your work, you get, you, if you multiply this out, you should always get the original problem. So this is something you should already know. So it should be fresh in your mind when you're doing this, this next thing. So um, now let's talk about what happens if they give you two variables. So if they give you something that looks like this in two variables, meaning like instead of just having one variable, now they have an X and a Y. So this time, instead of just having the standard form as you usually have it on top, they give you something like this, AX squared Y squared plus BXY plus CY squared. And you're like, what? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, how do we do that? Um, so I'm gonna give you the steps right here. And I also like to call this the Xbox method because you're gonna need to not only draw an X, you're going to need to um, put a box and include a box with that. So let me zoom it out so you guys can see the steps clearly, and then we'll do uh, some examples. So if you haven't written down the steps, write these down. I'm going to pause, pause the video if you need to. So step one, first, you need to identify coefficients A, B, and C. We've done that before. Draw a big X. We've done that before. 
multiply AC, put it on top. We've done that before as well, but in this case, you you're gonna have to include the variables as well. So that's why I uh, highlighted include variables, nice and big, so you can include them. Um, step four says place B on the bottom. In this case, we're also gonna have to include the variables if there are any variables there. Um, step five, same thing. We've done it. Again. We've done it also. Uh, find the combination of numbers that, and variables and multiply to the number on the top, but add to the number on the bottom. So you've also done that, but this time we're including variables as well. So the first five steps you've already done. It's basically the last lesson. Um, where it starts to get different is steps six, seven, and eight. So this time there's no way around it. After you draw the X, you're going to have to also include a box. But you've done both of these things in separate lessons. Now we're going to put it all together. So step number six says, draw a two by two box and place the first term on the top left and the last term on the top on the bottom right. Step seven, place a combination of answers from the X on the diagonal in any order. Um, these are different. And then step eight, factor out the box completely while verifying your results to make sure that it multiplies to the original expression. So the last three are different but you've done it before in separate lessons. So I'm gonna go ahead and just jump into an example and then I'll explain exactly uh, what it is that you needed to, to do for this. So um, let's say we wanna factor out something like this. So you have two X squared plus 13 X Y plus six Y squared. If you notice, there are two variables, there is an X and there is also a Y. So we're gonna to have to use these steps um, above. We're gonna to have to use the X box method, meaning you're gonna to have to draw an X, but you're gonna actually have to draw a box as well. So there's no way around the box this time. So um, let's go ahead and do the first couple of steps. So first we need to draw a big X. Uh, as you saw from the last lesson, we need to multiply A times C and put that on top, and then we need to put B on the bottom. However, we're gonna have to include the variables this time, so there's no way around that. So when we multiply A times C, that would be this multiplied by that, but we're also gonna have to include the variables meaning that when I write it down, instead of just writing it down it's two times six, which is 12, I'm gonna write 12 and then X squared and then Y squared because I'm including the variables with the multiplication as X squared and Y squared are also there. Um, B goes on the bottom. So that would be this guy right here, the um, 13 X Y. So when I write 13, I'm not, gonna, I'm not just gonna write 13 on the bottom, I'm gonna write 13 and the variables X and Y. So that also goes on the bottom. Um, the rest you know how to do, but like I said, we're, we're including variables this time because there are, there's an extra variable, so uh, we need to account for that. So when you're finding the combination of numbers, same thing, think of two numbers that multiply to 12, but add to 13. Um, if you said 12 times one, that is correct. So 12 times one would give you 12 and 12 plus one would give you 13. However, we're gonna have to make sure that it adds up to the number on the bottom and it multiplies to the number on top, meaning that we're gonna have to include some variables as well. So if I want this to be 13 X, Y, that means that this, this one needs to have an X, Y, and this needs to have an X, Y as well. Why? So that when we add them up, it adds up to the number on the bottom, which is 13 X, Y. And when you multiply these two, it multiplies to the term on top, which is 12 X squared, Y squared. And it actually does match up when you do that. So now that we have the X, we need to account for the box. So there's no way around it this time. We're gonna to have to draw a two by two box. Um, we're gonna fill in the box. So the steps say that on the very, very first part of the box, we need to include the first term on the top left. And then on the bottom right, we need to include the last term. So all that means is that on the first space, we're gonna have two X squared which is the first term in my original problem. On the last uh, bottom right corner, I'm gonna have six Y squared, which is the very last term of my original problem. But then on the diagonal, I'm gonna put the answers that I just got from the big X. So now it doesn't matter where, where you put which one, it order doesn't matter. You can put the one X Y here or here, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just go in order. I'm gonna write the 12 X Y and put it there. I'm gonna write one X Y and place it there, okay? From here, you've done this before. Now we just have to factor out the box and you get your answer. So you've done this when you did factoring by grouping. Uh, basically what we wanna do is take everything out of the box, each row and each column, and that'll give you your factors on the outside. So let's do the first row. So is there anything that I can take out of these two terms? The answer is yes, you can take a two X out of these two terms. So that's the first row. Second row, is there anything that I can take out of these two terms? The answer is yes, I can take out a Y. 
out of those two terms. Then we do the first column. Is there anything that I can take out of these two? The answer is yes, we can take out our next. And then finally, what can I take out of these two? The answer is we can take a six from both of these because they both have six in common, but we could also take a Y out of both of these. So I'm gonna include six and Y. So now my final answer is this is gonna be a binomial multiplied by a binomial. In this case, the binomial would be, it doesn't matter which order you write first. Uh, you can write two X plus Y multiplied by x plus 6y as your final answer. So this will be my final answer. Um, if you switch the order, it doesn't matter. Like who cares, right? Two times three is three times two, same answer. So if you write it backwards, x plus 6y times two x plus y, same exact thing. So these are your answers. Um, whichever one you decide to do, uh, that would be the final factor form. And you could always multiply it out and see if it gives you the original problem. And if it does, that means that you got the answer correct. So you can always go ahead and check your work every single time. Okay, hopefully that's simple enough. Um, I only have a few more examples for you because I know you've done this before. It's just kind of like we're putting two and two together. So uh, here we go. Example number two. We want to factor this expression out. And I see two variables. So automatically, I know I'm going to use the x and I'm going to use the box because I see two variables. So let's draw a big x and say, okay, what goes on top of that big X? Um, from the last lesson, again, AC goes on top, B goes on the bottom. In this case, I'm gonna include this term multiplied by the last term. Don't forget the um, signs, right? If there's negatives, include those. Uh, AX, A squared times 14B squared, that would give me 14A squared B squared on top. And then on the bottom, I just drop this down. In this case, the bottom of the box would be negative nine AB. So I'm gonna write down here negative nine a, B. I'm including the variables. Okay. Now we're going to try to find the combination. What are two numbers that multiply to the top number, but add to the bottom number? So think long and hard about this. Um, the actual answer to that question is negative two and negative seven. So if you multiply negative two, well, let me change the color on this because I already used yellow and that's kind of boring. Um, so here we go. So if I actually multiply negative two and negative seven, I mu it multiplies out to a positive 14, but it adds to a negative nine. So that is my correct combination. But once again, I gotta make sure to account for the A, B. So I'm gonna put an A and a B here and an A and a B here. Now, if you notice, it matches everything up, right? So that times that would give you the number on top or the term on top, and that plus that would give you the term on the bottom. Okay, now we need to do the box because we already counted for the X. Now we just got to figure out uh, what are my factors after I draw the box. So draw a box two by two, same as last example. On the very first slot, we're going to put the first term and on the very uh, top left first term and then bottom right last term. So in this case, it means I'm going to put the X squared there and then the 14B squared there. On the diagonal, I'm gonna write the answers that I just got from my big X. So it doesn't matter which one you put where. So I'm gonna write negative two AB here and I'm gonna write negative seven AB there. Okay, so that came from these two. Then um, finally, all you have to do is factor out the box to get your original problem. So each row in each column, we gotta factor out. So starting with this first row, I'm gonna take out an A positive. Starting with this next row, I'm gonna take out a it looks like only you can take out a B, but if you remember from one of the previous lessons, the first number is a negative, so I'm gonna include a negative as well. So instead of just taking out a B, I'm gonna put negative B because the first term is a negative. Okay, when I do the first column, same exact thing. Uh, it looks like I can take out an A, positive. And then finally on the last column, it looks like I can take out a negative seven because the first one is a negative. Um, and I also can take out a B. So I'm gonna write negative seven B. So make sure you're pretty good at factoring. Um, your final answer can be written like this. So when you factor this out, the final answer is the product of A minus B times A minus 7B. And this will be the final factor form of the original problem. Again, if you wanna check your work, you could always multiply this out. See if you get the, the problem that we started off with. If we got the problem that we started off with, then you're pretty much good, good to go. Um, and in this case, that is not the case. Okay, so it looks like I made a mistake somewhere up here. 
So um, as you can see, when I when I look into this box, let me erase it before I move on and make more mistakes because it will happen. Um, when I look at the inside of this box, something doesn't match up, right? So here I have an A, uh, but here when I multiply this by negative B, uh, there was a negative two that I did not take out. I also can take out a two. So I'm sorry if I confused some of you guys. I know I probably did, uh, but there you go, problem solved. So if you notice, everything should match up. Make sure everything multiplies to the numbers on the inside. That was a big mistake on my part. Um, I didn't check, but now that I you know, checked, I, kn I know that these are actually the correct terms. So A times A is A squared. Negative seven times A and B would give you negative seven AB. A times negative two B is negative two AB. And then negative seven times negative two is positive 14, B to the power of two. Okay, now I'm happy because now it actually makes sense. So the final answer is A minus two B multiplied by A minus seven B. Sorry if I confused anyone, but I'll do more examples so you guys can get the hang of it. Um, okay, example number three. So factor the following expression. This time I see two variables and it's a quadratic because it's to the power of two. So I know most likely that I'm gonna have to use the X and the box. So, um, I spelled box backwards, haha. <laughs> Good thing I'm not an English teacher. Um, so let's do this real quick. So first I need to make an X, big X. I need to multiply A and C and put it on top. So again, that would be the first term multiplied by the last term. Don't forget the signs and put it on top. In this case, 18 times two would give you a total of 36. And we have a negative two, so I'm gonna put a negative 36 on top. Now, don't forget that we're gonna include the variables this time. So I'm gonna write 36 M squared N squared, okay? Then the B, I'm gonna put it on the bottom. In this case, B is this term, which is negative nine MN. So negative nine M N, including the variables, very important. Then I gotta find the combination. Okay, what two numbers multiply to the top number but add to the bottom number? We've done this before, so we just gotta find the right combination. Um, if you said negative 12 and positive three, that is correct. So negative 12 times three would give you negative 36 when you multiply it. But when you add these two up, you get a negative nine in total. So now we just have to include the variables as well. This has M and N, so we have to have M and here and M and there. That way it multiplies to the term on the top and it also adds to the term on the bottom. All right, finally, we have to make the box. This time, hopefully I won't make any mistakes. Oof, fingers crossed. But either way, check your work because I know it happens. It even happens to me. So first term goes on the first top left corner. So that would be 18 M squared that came from here. The last term goes on the bottom right corner. That is the negative two N squared that came from there. And then the answer to the diagonal that I just got the correct combination would be negative 12 M N and then three M N. Okay. Now all we have to do is factor out the box. What can you take outside of the box from each row in each column? Again, make sure that it multiplies out to the inside of the box. Uh, don't be like me, be better. And if you do make a mistake, check your work. So, all right, so out of the first uh, row, it looks like I can take out six. Six is the biggest number, right? The greatest common factor that I can take out, but also an M, so six M. And then here it looks like I can take out a, well, just an N really, because they both share N. So I'm gonna put an N right here on the side. Um, I can take out an M and I can take out any other term. And then the first number is positive, so it stays positive. Okay. So first column, what can I take out of these two? It looks like I can take out a three for sure because three goes into both of those, 18 and three. And I can also take out an M. Finally, what can I take out of these two? It looks like I can take out the number two. And it also looks like I can take out an N from both of these. And the first one is negative. So I have to make sure to put a negative in front of that too. That's it. So my final answer, um, the factor form of this would be three M minus two N multiply by 6m plus n would give me my original problem. So my final factor form is 3m minus 2n multiplied by 6m plus n. If you multiply that out, you should get the original expression. Okay, so last example. Um, example number four, and I am going to say for this example, I'm going to just give it away into this is kind of like a trick, questions in a, a trick question in a way because you have to be very, very vigilant when you're doing factoring expressions because sometimes 
you can do more than one thing at once. For example, let's say I want to factor this out, right? And uh, if I wasn't being careful, I should know that on the very first term is to the power of three, not two. So it's not a quadratic. The highest power is actually three, which is cubic. So that's a big red flag. There's also a three here. So how can I factor this out? Um, the answer is you can't do the Xbox yet because you actually have a common factor. The first thing you need to do is take out the greatest common factor, which we've done before, before you can do the Xbox. So make sure you're careful. If you can take out a greatest common factor for any problem at all, you should always take out the greatest common factor first. This is like first and foremost. Always check to see if there's a greatest common factor before doing any of the other ways that we've talked about factoring in this class. So this is like number one forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And then after that, if you can't take out a greatest common factor, then you can do some of the other steps. So now that I've kind of spilled the beans on that, the greatest common factor between these three, as you can see, you can take out a five from all of these, right? That came from um, the first terms. That would be the, the 30, the negative 25, and the negative 30. So that's where the five came from. Now, um, if I'm looking at the next, x to the power of three, x to the power of 2, and then x. As you can see from all these three, I can take out an x from all three. And then finally, uh, what can I take out of the y's? As you can see, I have a y here, two y's there, and then three y's there. I can also take out a y. So um, ultimately, we're actually going to have this factored out as 5xy and then some other stuff inside. So let's figure out what goes on the inside. 5 times 6 is 30. I have an x there. I need two more to get uh, the original expression of x to the power of 3. I have one y there. I need one y, so I'm good on that. I have a minus in the middle. And then 5 times what will give you 25. That would be another 5. Uh, I need two x's. I only have one, so I'm missing an x here. I need two y's as well. I only have one on the outside, so I'm missing a y here. Then I have to do it one last time. I have another minus in the middle. 5 times what would give me 30? That would be a 6. And then I need one x. I already have it, so I'm good. I need three y's, but I only have one, so I'm missing two more y's there. So I'm going to write y to the power of 2. So you've guessed it. We've used greatest common factor in this problem, but we also need to factor out the inside. And on the inside, as you can see, this is a factorable um, because it is quadratic to the power of two and it also has two variables which means that I, I need to do the x and I also need to do the box. So we're using mixed um, combinations uh, to be able to factor stuff out. So figure out what works and then whatever works you're going to have to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just forget about this for now. So it's just like keep that in your mind. It's still there but I'm going to forget about this for a minute. <clears throat> well, I factor this other stuff out. So let me draw the attention to the stuff that I underlined green. So now we're going to have to factor that out. So I'm going to put a big X. Uh, a multiplied times C, which is the first multiplied by the last, right? So that's A, B, and C. Don't forget the signs. Uh, in this case, I'm going to have 6 times negative 6, which is negative 36. Uh, first and the last, that would be X squared, Y squared. Then B is going to go on the bottom. In this case, the B is going to be the negative 5XY. Uh, which I'm just going to drop down and write back here. So negative 5xy. That came from this middle term here. The rest is the same. Um, so what two numbers multiply to the top but add to the bottom? So go ahead and try to figure out what two combinations do that. Um, if you guessed negative 9 and positive 4, that is correct. Negative 9 times 4. 4 is going to give you the product of negative 36, and negative 9 plus 4 would give you a negative 5. But then again, you have two variables, so you're going to have to include those two variables as well with your product. Finally, um, we did the x, now we have to do the box. So the box in this case, the first term would be this right here. That's going to go on the first slot, 6x squared. The last term, which is this right here, that's going to go in the last slot. And then the middle terms, the right combination that we just got, from the box that goes in the diagonal wherever you want to put it so i'm going to go ahead and put negative 9 x y there and then positive 4 x y there okay now we have to figure out okay what goes on the outside of the box let me erase this because it's kind of in my way so what goes on the outside of this box in this case um we have to do all the rows on the columns kind of like uh, the rows on the columns kind of like the last problem so from the first row i can take out a 2x 
from the second row, I can take out, it looks like a Y from both of these, and it looks like negative three goes into both of these. So negative three, Y would be my factor. Uh, the first column, I can also take out a three, and I can also take out an X. So I'm gonna go ahead and write three X. Let me change my colors real quick. Um, and then finally here on the last one, I can take out a, looks like two goes into both of these and I can also take out a Y. So I'm gonna write two Y. So go ahead and make sure that it actually multiplies out to everything inside correctly. Um, it looks like it does for me. Three times negative three is negative nine, X and Y. And then two times three is negative six, Y squared. Cool. So I know that I did it right. The factors for this box right here are on the outside, which is written as 3x plus 2y, because it's positive, and then 2x minus 3y, because that term is negative. Now, is that my final answer? No, hard no, it is not my final answer because that is not my original problem. So my original problem was this guy right there, right? The negative, the 30x to the power of 3y minus 25x squared y squared minus 30xy to the power of 3. So my actual answer is including the greatest common factor. So the final answer for this would be 5xy because we had taken that on the outside in the beginning of the problem. Multiply by 3x plus 2y multiply by 2x minus 3y. So this will be your final answer. If you multiply all these three terms together, you should get the original problem. And now you've used the combination of greatest common factor and factoring using the X and the box. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, any questions, let me know. See you guys in the next one.